This evening, we were to do it a couple of evenings, but we mm -hmm. actually got carried away with a very interesting topic, which we are going to get more into at another time. The good old DNA. Mr. James, I got so much feedback mm -hmm. from the DNA t topic. Trust really? me. Yeah. Mm, that's good. Persons that have genuine concerns mm -hmm. want to know how to go about talking to their partner about it without causing right. any pain or anything. Mm -hmm. So... You know, while we do the act, we can also find a little pointer here and there to encourage persons if they have a doubt mm -hmm. without mashing up the relationship, so to speak. Uh, we have with us, though, some of our um, students that is early in class, and that's um, Janet from St. Mary. Say good evening, Mr. Chambers and DG, bless up yourself. Evening, and of course, Sadie, pleasant evening, Mama, Mr. Chambers, how are you both doing? The son of to be on the farm early morning and late evening, take a break to listen to my program. Big up yourself, Sadie. Sadie hard working, you know? Sadie. Yeah, she, ver she does farming. Sadie do construction. Sadie do very, very hard working sister, and I love her. Trust me. Denise from Cornell Barracks. Say good evening, DG. And that's Denise. Kevoy from Sunil St. Thomas. Say good evening, DG and Mr. Chambers. And, of course, somebody sent a message, but that doesn't belong to us about an uh, email and some song things. Cassidy, we saw thought that for you, all right? 13, 12, we're not ignoring your messages. I said, I know that that message is not intended for me. So the engineer will look to see if your email with songs had come in. And you see, I'm waiting a reply, but I'm not quite sure if you'll get a reply on this program, or you can contact Styles at 341. The same number to WhatsApp them on. Right. right? Yes. <laughs> If you do want to type a description okay. of what the program is, of what your live, so your phone, right, ro your, your, your phone, uh, rotate it you now? Yes, six years, yeah, there it is now. Okay. No. All right, folks. So, hold no. on, no, but you, you, you come to Cassidy live or you do your own live? I'm doing a live because I mean, said Cassidy sent me anything yet. Cassidy alive. See, so you, love, you love live, live. Cassidy you, you're alive. live, Cassidy? Oh, so so I'll in. do this until. Um, and I see persons have already jumped online. Jordan. Um, yes. Jordan. Debbie. Yes. Um, Sophie. See you guys. Um, recognizing your presence. This evening we want to look at some of the conclusions made by the judges. Yes. We can't go through the entire oh, thing. Oh, not at all. Mm -mm. So we're going to look at the conclusion of Justice Chief Justice Sykes. Mm -hmm. We're going to look at the conclusion made by Pats. Mm -hmm. And um, we're also going to look at the conclusion made by G, uh, by Justice Lisa Palmer Hamilton. Mm -hmm. All right, Patrick, see you, Janine, see you as Bless well. Bless you, Janine. Um, and in respect of the topic that we spoke about on the last occasion, um, if you have any doubts and you want to break it easily to your partner, counseling helps. Mm -hmm. um, find a counselor. Mm. Somebody who is trained and um, carry a partner, sit down, have a discussion and break the news gently that I'd want a test to be done. Yes, yes. Right? It, it, I think it would all go well for everyone. All right. So needs has been in the news. Um, persons are still talking about it. Most um, radio programs go on. They're still discussing it and they're still breaking it apart. As you would know, the, um, it was reported in the media Mm -hmm. that there is a split between members of the, gov the government as to whether or not they should um, appeal okay. the decision of the court. Uh, really? Marcia recognizing you as well. Smart Skills Training Center recognizing you as well. So there's one, there's one group of persons in the government that believe that there, it is too important a constitutional issue mm -hmm. for there not to be an appeal. Mm. And there's that faction that says, listen, don't appeal it. Let's just go back to the drawing board. Yeah. Start again and see where, see how we can fix the issues that were identified. Mm -hmm. um, while you listen, folks, what I want you to do both on WhatsApp and, uh, and on Facebook Live at Styles FM and my Facebook Live as well, what I want you to do is tell us whether you believe this is a matter that should go to the Court of Appeal. And as a matter of fact, whether or not it should be tested all the way at the Privy Council to, so that we can address the important issues of law that arise. Bearing in mind all that in we have taught you about um, 
the the the, the database of of needs and if you think yes, yes uh, just bear all of that in mind because mm-hmm. I am saying no, Mr. Chambers let me first say before your listeners start to say I am not against needs mm-hmm. I am just I, I just want to make certain that all the I's are dot and all the cr- T's are crossed before we roll out needs mm. I Be- think most persons are in support yes. of it yes it's, 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 it's how it is going to be done it's mm-hmm. a how that I believe most persons have a difficulty with like myself yes it's the how um, and protecting constitutional rights as well. I think yes. those are the things that persons are concerned. Carlo about. from um, Bal Claris is saying good evening to myself and Mr. Chambers. Mm-hmm. Um, Jody Ann from St. Mary is saying good evening, DJ and Mr. Chambers. I'm in class. Please say hi to my friends, Princess. Princess, listen to Styles. Mm-hmm. Big up yourself, Princess. Oh, let me do this now. <laughs> Some persons descended on my office, my dear Mm co-host, and was enraged Mm -hmm. that every evening we sit here Mm -hmm. and we big up people from Canada and UK and New New York and these places, and we never mention New Jersey. They were not happy. (laughs) No, but why they can't WhatsApp in and cuss we? Because they could have have WhatsApp in order to say, remember us. And I was told that if I don't mention it, okay. I am going to get <laughs> somebody's, the mind of someone on my Facebook. Because I, I was wondering if you want so to, to report it. to avoid that, I want to big up everybody from New Jersey who listens to us continuously. Every evening you have been with us, we want to say thank you for listening us for watching us on Facebook Live, and we invite you to continue doing that so. It's so sweet of you, New Jersey. Imagine mm-hmm. having threatening me, but you understand. Um, to, <laughs> to show you how, how much we are watched and listened. Oh, yes, definitely. So persons and, um, feel offended when their their areas is not and, um, I, and normally Portland listens to Styles. Portland is a home of Styles. Yes. But St. Thomas, mm-hmm. St. Thomas is on it, Mr. Chambers. I don't know. They have a competition going on up there. <laughs> and um, Vivine say, good evening to you guys. St. Mary in the house. And Jody and say, yes, she do. All right, princess. Now listen, Styles, big up herself. Come on, I say, good evening, DJ and Mr. Chambers. Came more from Sunny Hill St. Thomas, of course. There goes my um, Mr. Chamber. You know the name, eh? the name they look familiar to you know what he's done. Let me see if it you see it now, big boy. Yes, yes, tell me what you know about MT. Landscaping the man who has made the scholarship ah! a reality. Man, <laughs> when I look and see that check, man, of $120,000. Yes, folks, I saw the check, too. Man, I feel like I'm not forging the signature. You know what <laughs> So, empty landscaping services Big has come through the promises on, Me you know, you. in memory of his father and has donated $120,000 for the Vanessa Laidley Fund at the Teachfield Fund at the Teachfield High School. And, and so if you are led... By the selflessness mm-hmm. of this gentleman, feel free to yes. make your own contribution to the fund. Yes. Nothing will be um, rebuffed. The money was already paid over to the school. Two students will receive lunch money and bus fare mm-hmm. every day. There you go. And um, so long as they're in school. Mm-hmm. And um, they're also their books and little mm-hmm. bags and shoes for summer mm-hmm. is going to be taken care of. There Two students. Uh, of course, I... Um, it was selected by the school. Right. And so we're going to be having an official handing over ceremony mm-hmm. of the check, although it's already paid to the school. In June, um, a date to be announced, Mr. Mm-hmm. Chambers. You know, so we'll put our pretty down and I'll go up there yes. and all these things. So it is That's actually. Bernard. It is, Hi, Latoya, how are you doing? He did it in honor of his father. Right. I don't like to spoil his father. Surname, you know. You can, just, you, can, um, the, you can do this name for me? This name, the Dini. You, t- you, ca- you call it good because me also try and me don't want to spoil it. So Colin actually, um, MT Lamps gave him services, actually did this in honor of Mr. Calvin M. De Souza. Mm-hmm. Must get it right one at a time. And you know, I really want to thank De Souza. De Souza. Okay, cool. De Souza. <laughs> so two students are happy to see him because of his, you know, very kind way along with him and his first lady. All right, so. Blessings to you as well, Janine. Um, you said blessings to both. To oh, you yes, both. Janine. Thank you, Janine. Same to you. Sophia Clark, to keep on 
we'll keep going, Sophia. Thank you for those encouragement. Vanessa, Vanessa from um, Florida. Mm -hmm. the Venetia, Venetia from out in Florida there. Thank you very much. We'll keep going. Waka T from Cape Cod. Say so what do a contribution to? Cape Cod? Yeah, man. Waka Cape again? Cod, upper Massachusetts. That's my place over the Cape. Uh-huh. Yeah, man. Over I've never been there. What? Okay, no. Over there is so nice. When you mm -hmm. go over there, you feel like you, you get Jamaica food. And yeah, man, Cape Cod is a little island by itself. Yes. And that's when I go to Mass, that's where I go. That's my place, man. Okay, wonderful. That's my place. All right, All right so, so paragraph 248, are you there? Yes, I'm there. All right, so Justice Sykes' conclusion reads thus mm -hmm. Proportionality is a test for constituting. Constitute Okay. Yeah. No, I'm being I mean, I catch you Proportionality is a test for constitutionality of legislation. Mm -hmm. The Oaks test is the test to be applied. Privacy under the charter includes bodily privacy, informational privacy, and privacy of choice. Mm -hmm. Section 61E and sections 43 1 of the National Identification Registration Act violates section 13.3J subsection 2 of the fundamental right of the charter. They do not provide sufficient safeguards mm -hmm. against what? Misuse. And? Abuse. Of the data collected. That's what I said before. There is no independent oversight like in the come of the of my of the police federation and i'm looking sideways folks the, there and, is um, no just a correction because i'm, I'm mm -hmm. a chairman for the police federation for portland yes. in the is not an oversight for the police federation they are oversight for, for the, the jamaica constabulary force, force which includes the police federation no no not the police federation you're correct for yeah, the JCF. Exactly. Yes, you're correct. You're <laughs> the, correct. The, the, the police federation is an elite set of you're people correct. that you're doesn't correct. even need an oversight. Yes. I, I was forensic enough in my language. <laughs> there is no independent overs oversight body that is mandated to conduct an audit of the authority and take action where it is found that employees individually or the authority as an institution has violated the National Identification Registration Act. Now, that's a serious thing, you know. Mm -hmm. Conclusion. Agree or disagree, that's a conclusion that will cause anyone to pause. Because it's saying there's nothing there to say um, mm -mm -mm, something is going wrong here. Mm -hmm. Pause. Let us look at this again. There is no oversight body. And folks, when you don't have any oversight body to watch what is happening and to ensure that the proper channels are being followed, mm -hmm. you're going to have problems. Problems, yes. Yes. Um, he goes on. It's 250. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You want to go ahead with that one? Compulsory taking of biographical and biometric data is a violation of privacy rights under section. And this is another one. I never want to read. I don't want you to read. Can you see how they open the man bracket or something? Section 13.3 A A J 1. Subsection two, 2 of the charter. charter. Therefore, section 20 of the NERA violates section 13, subsection 3, A, J, 1, 2 of the charter. And that's the right to privacy. Yes. There's no evidence that the data required under the third schedule is a minimum necessary to identify persons, and so there is no evidence that a right to privacy has been violated as little as possible. So there that is, that they're saying, Justice Sachs is saying there, we have not been convinced yes. that as little as possible has been done to prevent the violation of privacy. I mean, some amount of privacy is mm -hmm. understood will mm -hmm. be violated, as sometimes you have to give something to get something. Mm -hmm. But he's saying he's not convinced that enough was done to limit yeah. the invasion of your right to privacy. I remember we had said on the last occasion that when it go out, there is no way of getting it back yes. in. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. There is no evidence that the concept of data minimization, which is taken no more than is necessary to meet the object objective, was applied in the drafting of the third schedule and the third schedule valid section 13, subsection 3, A, J, 1, 2, 2 of the charter. This means that there is no 
justification presented for requiring the data under the third schedule. And that's the biogra biometric. Metric. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I believe, if I'm not incorrect. Mm -hmm. um, he says, he continues, he says, section 39, and he's going through all the sections that he believes mm -hmm. has violated the Charter of Rights. Right. Okay. Section 39 of the National Identification Registration Act violates Section 133J2 of the Charter. Mm -hmm. It enables third party access, again, privacy. Mm. It enables third party access to the database without adequate safeguards against misuse and abuse by the third party. party. That's a concern for me mm -hmm. personally. Mm -hmm. In addition, no justification has been advanced showing why third parties need to have access to the database. Why anybody except the authorized persons should have any access to the <laughs> database. And he's saying nothing has been advanced to show why anybody else outside of the authorized persons should have access to the database. And he's not comfortable with that at all. And I hope that the um, persons that listen and, and, and when understand. When we have gone through the act. Yes. yes, and understand what that entails. Mm -hmm. the, the information from us that is going in the database, all that it, in, it entails. Because it, it, the, 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 the National Identification Registration Act says that certain persons can access the information, mm -hmm. like a commercial bank. Yes. Yes. And so he's saying here, why? Mm -hmm. Why would they need to access it? Why does this third party, apart from the government, need to access this information? Dangerous practice. Dangerous. Dangerous. Yes. Uh, paragraph 252 says, Section 41 of the NIRA violates Section 13 3G of the Charter. This is so because the mandatory legal obligation by Jamaican and ordinary residents to produce a national identification number or a national identification card when seeking to access goods and services from public bodies while not placing the same legal obligation on foreigners to produce some form of identification amounts to unequal treatment. Mm -mm. Let me break that down, folks. <laughs> He's saying that you, under the Act, the Jamaican is being required to produce your national identification number and a national identification card mm -hmm. to access goods and services. But a foreigner can come in and access yeah. the goods and services without, without producing any, anything. Yeah. So you, in your own country, <laughs> will be denied access to these things if you don't have this. But a foreigner can just come in and access it. And he's saying, it is unequal treatment Yes, under the Charter of Rights. And no plausible justification was advanced so that the state has failed to justify that kind of violation of your right. See, everything does wrap up your in right each other. Your right to equal treatment. Yeah, but I was just about to say, you see, all the laws are wrapping each other. Remember, we did the, um, the Charter of Rights? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Section 60? Yes. Section 60 and the 6th schedule, to the extent that they make a national identification number a prerequisite to holding a passport. I didn't even know that. Mm -mm. I can't remember. I may have read it, but I don't, I don't even remember that. Mm -hmm. So it makes it a prerequisite that you have a national identification number to hold a passport. And he's saying it violates Section 3N of the Charter. The requirement for the national identification number is disproportionate and so harms the right to a passport. No justification has been put forward except perhaps administrative convenience and that is not a sufficient reason to violate the provision i have to write to move the right to move about yes. in my country i have the right to my passport <laughs> and you're going to tell me that i can't get it yep if i don't Unless have this national that. identification mm -hmm. number and he's saying no there's no proper you. justification for it yes He's saying, however, that sections 4, 15, 23, 27, 30, and 36, 4 do not violate any provision under the Charter of Rights. Right. So there are some sections that he's saying um, were fine, 
didn't raise any eyebrows and therefore needed no um didn't need to be addressed by I hope, I hope, him. I hope it's not appealed though, but in but 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 in go back to the drawing board and see where the, the, the points the flaws are pointed out and see if you can come back to rectify that and and apply again. Instead and of, and that's what some persons think should happen yes. instead of appealing the decision. Mm -hmm. Some persons believe that what really should happen is that they should go to the drawing board and yeah, see what man. can be done. All right. I want to um, look at paragraph 260, where he speaks about severing those sections that violate the Constitution. Mm -hmm. What that means, folks, is that when a legislation is being analyzed, mm -hmm. particularly by the court, and a particular section is found to be in violation of the Constitution, the court has the option to take it out mm -hmm. or to order that it be removed, reworded, reworked, reviewed. Mm -hmm. Yes? And having removed it and the forensic language that is used is strike it down, have so, yes. struck it down, whether or not the rest of the act as it is can survive by itself. By itself. Mm -hmm. And so what Chief Justice Sykes look, looked at um, in section 260 here, paragraph 260 and on, is whether or not those offending provisions that he just mentioned, 39 and mm -hmm. so forth that we just read, whether those sections, when you take them out of the legislation, whether or not the legislation can, can survive, it can own. stand on its own. Yes. And so he says the important question in this case is whether there should be severance or striking down the entire law, now that some parts have been found to be in violation of the Constitution. He says... It should be noted that both sides, so listen folks, both the Attorney General, the government, and the claimant, Mr. Robinson and his attorneys, mm -hmm. declined to address the court on this issue and left it to the discretion of the court. None of them addressed it. Mm -hmm. Whether or not those offending sections, if severed, if taken out of the legislation, the legislation can stand on its own. He says, in my view, this is Chief Justice Sachs, mm -hmm. in my view, this is undesirable and full submission should have been made on the point. Mm -hmm. I have come to the conclusion that the rest of the statute cannot stand after the violating provisions Whoa. are severed because of my conclusion that the regime as it presently stands does not offer sufficient protection for the sensitive data that is to be collected under the statute. So Chief Justice Sykes has slapped the government mm -hmm. and the claimant on the hand for not addressing this matter. Mm -hmm. But he has come to a conclusion and his conclusion is that it cannot stand when it is severed. This means that even if the scheme were a voluntary one more robust protection would be required. And he says, my colleagues and I have arrived at the same conclusion by different routes. They have said that the remaining part of the law is so bound to the severed provision that the National Identification and Registration Act should be declared unconstitutional, null, void, and of no effect. And that is Chief Justice Sykes. <laughs> but remember, Chief Justice Sykes was not the only judge who was listening. Justice Batts, I remind you, um, also gave his um, gave his his his, his uh, judgment as well. And Justice Lisa Palmer Hamilton mm -hmm. also gave his judgment. And while I'm not going to go through the entirety of Justice Batts' um, judgment. I want to read how he introduces his judgment. <laughs> Is it looking at it? Up? No chains around my feet, but I am not free. I am down here in captivity in this concrete jungle. He says, these words put to music by the Honorable 
Robert Nesta Marley, O M D C S, reflect the sentiment of my inner city dwellers. Many. These of my many inner city dwellers. Oh, they suggest. Where is it, my? Show me where is it, my? Oh, reflect the sentiment of many. <laughs> inner, thank you very much, <laughs> inner city dwellers. They suggest that independence from British colonial rule has not produced hope for economic, social, or political liberation. Jamaican policymakers have, with varying prescriptions and mixed success, endeavored to address those concerns. concerns. Chains around my feet, but I am not free. No chains around my feet, but, but I am not free. free. Oh, my. Powerful words. I was trying to find, um, to do a recap of what and what the, um, the needs had entailed in terms of... You have the act there? I have it here. All right, so you can go and look at it. I'm going to look at section 373, paragraph 373, mm -hmm. and see what, look at a little that what Justice Batts had to say. As I said, folks, I'm not going to go to, through the entirety of his, um, of his judgment, but I'm going to look at the conclusions that he has made. In his conclusion, he says, the Constitution of Jamaica is premised on the notion that free men in a democracy provide the best arrangement to secure a peaceful, stable, and productive society. The separation of powers is intended to prevent a concentration of power which can militate against democracy. The separation of powers, folks, I believe we, had, we have spoken about it. Mm -hmm. So there are three arms of government. There's the executive, there's the judiciary, and there's the legislature. And those arms operate as checks and balances on each other, much like the American um, construct, where the House check and balances the president, and so should the Senate. Um, so that is what obtains in our in our construct. He says the guarantee of individual rights is intended to prevent erosion of the freedoms enjoyed by free men in a democracy. The free and democratic society thereby created functions best where there is trust between the average citizen and the state. And he goes on to speak about some other things. Judges are not, as the learned attorney general reminded us, are not responsible for policy or for the content of legislation. We, and he's speaking about the judiciary now, because mm -hmm. as I said, separation um, between the three arms of government. We, however, interpret and apply legislation intended to implement the policy. It is our sworn duty to ensure that enactments are consistent with and do not derogate from mm -hmm. the Constitution, which is our highest law. It is not within the remit of judges to say whether the premise of the Constitution is right or wrong. It is our duty to uphold the policy of the Constitution as revealed in its words, structure, and historical roots. We do this without regard to our popularity, which, as judges, we neither crave nor require. And he says in this judgment, I have endeavored to do no less. The National Identification Registration Act is unconstitutional, null and void, insofar as it, as it is intended to make compulsory the taking of biometric and other data so as to provide a national identification number and card for every citizen and resident of Jamaica. The involuntary nature of the policy infringes guaranteed constitutional rights. Furthermore, the statute seeks to prevent access to services, both public and private, or to make possible the denial of such, ser such services to citizens who fail to obtain the said national identification. There is further no or no adequate mechanism to prevent the utilization of the data obtained for other purposes, such as the creation of profiles. Mm -hmm. The danger of being the danger of a big brother state, or as the Supreme Court of India called it, a surveillance state, is real. 
the wide ranging provisions for information sharing and verification as well as identity confirmation by public and private sector adds to that reality and the final paragraph as he closes he says policymakers and social scientists should if they have not already done so consider the manner in which policies of control rem reminiscent of the plantation impact the trust level between citizen and state. <laughs> they may find that programs which liberate, not restrict, and which uplift, not suppress, do more to repair existing deficits of trust. Those are, however, matters for the policymaker, not the judge. I therefore end this judgment as I began with the words which that icon of reggae music address, address to us all. Emancipate yourself from mental slavery. Mm -hmm. None but ourselves can free our, free our minds. There will, for a reason stated above, be judgment for the claimant. It is hereby declared and ordered as follows. The, na the National Identification and Registration Act is unconstitutional, null, void, and of no legal effect. The persons that are putting it together, Mr. Chambers, didn't they do a number of consultations? Didn't they? I, I, I know for a fact That's a that good question. Uh, <laughs> That's well, a probably, good question. probably for the wrong person. But um, perhaps. Perhaps for the wrong person. Perhaps. But, uh, you know, it, it's a question, though. Did they do, you know, enough consultation? Did they educate persons? And while educating persons, then you would have understand the, the, the issues. Because I'm quite sure, although I, I really respect Justice Sykes, that he's not the only person who would have seen these like, flaws and, 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 and have them, and, you know, to say, well, so th this is troubling. And so we wonder, because as I say, needs is a good thing, but it, it must be properly thought through, because as I went through and you have explained and showed to me, that if the database is any way I mean, it's not, and, and the danger about it is that so long as the information gets out there, there's no way of, get, of recalling it. And I think that is where the danger lies. Yes. Justice Lisa Palmer Hamilton also gave her judgment. And again, folks, I will not be going through the entirety mm -hmm. of um, Justice um, Palmer Hamilton's judgment, but I will look at some salient points that she makes. The, the judgments are, listeners are rather lengthy. Very lengthy. Mm -hmm. um, but I will look at some salient um, points that she has made. And I will look at paragraph 397. She says, implicit in the preamble of the National Identification Registration Act. And the question she asked, folks, is several or not to sever? She says that's the question to answer. Mm -hmm. um, implicit in the preamble is in of the National Ident Identification Registration Act is the fact that the legislature intended to create a mandatory regime in order to achieve its objectives encapsulated in Section 3 of the National Identification Registration Act. This mandatory regime is applicable to all Jamaican citizens and persons ordinarily resident in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. The data required and captured as a result of this mandatory regime would then be accessible by both the public and private sectors. In my view, and this is Justice Lisa Palmer Hamilton saying this, in my view, this unbridled accessibility by public and private sectors is untenable and unconstitutional and would need requisite safeguards in place to ensure that the constitutional rights of the citizens are not violated. In my judgment, she says, even if we were to excise or sever sections 6, 20, 39, and folks, I'm going to say these slowly so you can go and look mm -hmm. at the act as it was then and come to your conclusions, your own conclusion. She said, even if you were to excise or sever section 6, sections 20, 39, 
41, 43, 45, and 60. 60. And the third and sixth schedules from the body of the National Identification Registration Act. Any form of severance, if it can be effected at all, based on the legislative intent of the NERA, would emasculate and, and abort. abort the act as a whole and defeat and de negate the teleological purpose of the provisions. So basically she's saying, folks, if you take it out, mm -hmm. the act is nothing without it. Without you have yeah. created Can an I abortion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it's of no value without those sections she's saying. Mm. Examining the NERA as a whole, it is clear that its legislative intent and purpose is to establish machinery that mandatorily requires every citizen to be registered on that particular national identification scheme. Mm. In my view, as was stated in Alberga, which is an authority to which um, the just Justice Lisa Palmer referred, mm -hmm. and the line of cases already cited by me, the other sections remaining are so intricately bound up to those which have been struck down as unconstitutional and invalid that what remains cannot independently survive. Hmm. And then she says, in closing, I'm of the firm view that the remaining provision of the NERA will not be able to survive severance. And I have no alternative but to con concur with my learned brothers, mm -hmm. Sykes, Chief Justice See. Sykes, mm -hmm. and Justice Batts on that point. On the issue of declaring Section 45 of NERA unconstitutional, though, though not pleaded, I concur with Justice Batts. In my judgment, the mere composition of a judicial review court is to determine in the main the unconstitutionality of statutes and whether any citizen's constitutional and human rights have been violated. Therefore, having declared that Section 45 is a violation of Section 3J, 13 3J of the Charter, I adopt the findings of Lord Diplock in the case of Olive Casey, Wandu versus Attorney General of Guyana, in which it is said, they are not confined to the procedure appropriate to an ordinary civil action. The clear intention of the Constitution is that a person who alleges that his, con his fundamental rights are threatened should have un in unhindered access to the High Court, is not to be defeated by any failure of Parliament or the rulemaking authority to make specific provisions as to how that access is to be gained. And she, you, as you know, for the foregoing, foregoing reasons and in mm -hmm. agreement with my learned brothers, I find judgment for the claim, claimant and the NERA is therefore struck down as unconstitutional, null, void, and of no effect. And if I may read the order of the court, it says, order of the court, by unanimous decision, it is declared that the National Identification and Registration Act is declared to be unconstitutional, null, void, and of no legal effect. Parties to file an exchange written submissions on cost, and they give a time for that. And that, my friends, wow. is a piece of the entirety of the judgment of the three judges who listened and heard submissions think, from the party? I think everybody should get this lengthy document and keep and read when mm -hmm. they can. Yes. Um, there's a lot Especially, to it, especially those law, persons who want to go to law school. Law school, yes. Because yes. mm -hmm. this is going to be referred to for years, years to, to come, come. Yes. as using as a reference. Like Heinz and the Queen. Oh, yes. yes. So mm -hmm. this is something that the person should get themselves familiar with and um, going forward. Yes, Mr. Chiefs. So that is the decision of the court, folks. It is worth reading. Mm -hmm. Try and get a copy from the Supreme Court website and make your own decision. Personally, I think it should be appealed. What do you think? I don't think it should be appealed. I think they should go back to the drawing board mm -hmm. um, and, and get some consultation on it, put it back together, and table it again properly. And I tell you why I think it should be appealed. Mm -hmm. There are some important points of constitutionality mm -hmm. 
and the capacity of government mm -hmm. to create law for the to order for to order society right and their capacity to create those laws mm -hmm. even though may they may infringe mm -hmm. on fundamental rights and freedoms mm -hmm. and how it is that the public should give the government its space okay. to make those legislations while infringing but not infringing too much, too much. on our rights mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that we can create an orderly society so personally i think it, it should be appeal so that my, we can hear a little more my thing about the appeal though mr chambers if we really think needs is good for us um an appeal can take some time eh? mm -hmm. and at the end of the appeal it can still go you way. know what bothers me about it mm -hmm. there is no dissenting opinion well true no dissenting opinion. Nobody has looked at the other side yes, to see. Yes, Let that's us true. look at it from a different angle. I'm not going to agree with my brothers or my sister. Mm -hmm. My brother or my sister. I am going to look at it this way. Yes? Mm -hmm. There's no dissenting opinion. And that is what, for me, folks, give me pause and make me say there should be an appeal. Because we have not heard a dissenting voice. I, I wonder if the dissenting voice, though, Mr. Chambers, would bring much in explaining if this, what is done to safeguard our data base, what is, because that is my primary um, um, problem, you know, mm -hmm. what are the steps taken to, to safeguard my privacy? Mm -hmm. That is my primary, and even if I don't understand nothing else about it, I understand that there's a possible, as it is right now, the, or, or as how it was rolled out, there's a possibility. Cares not how minute that my database could be out there, mm -hmm. my information could be out there. Why and is it that it could be severed? You That's have a, a point. Dis dissenting voice I wanted to hear. You know. Yes. Why yeah. is it that it couldn't be severed, and the act, and the government be allowed to go back to the drawing board with these severed provisions mm -hmm. and. Uh, I mean the act. I think what one of the thing though is that I think that uh, the court probably is looking at it that um, the government did not sit and wait for. I, I don't honestly. I don't believe that enough consultation was done, enough education was done on it, and I think the court was because it was. In other words, Mr. Chambers, it was put out there. Take it or leave it. It out there. Mm. And so what the court is doing as as as. They can appeal, and it can go either way, but I think what the court is doing is actually getting to the arguments of what the, the, the voices out here that did not get to speak is literally saying. I am being told, Mr. Chambers, when we go, went through this and I was told that of a man who laid on a roadside up there, so decides, uh, or in not in his right mind, never, it can become a criminal offense if you did not. Mm -hmm. And so it is a dangerous um, thing to just take it without understanding the fullness of it. Because if somebody, to how it was rolled out, after you, there would be a lot of criminals walking around. And why couldn't that be severed and the act remain? I don't say it could. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not saying it can, you know. Right. What I'm saying is, what is the argument for severing and allowing the act to stand so that it can be amended. I haven't heard anything. Yes, All three yes. judges have come to the same conclusion mm -hmm. by different routes. And so the public has not been given the benefit of a dissenting voice. And I'm not saying a voice that agrees with the government's position or submissions. Mm -hmm. That's not what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I'm saying a voice that says, even though I may not agree, or even though I agree, whether even if he says I don't agree, even if I don't agree with the submissions made by the government, mm -hmm. I am dissenting for these reasons. I believe that these provisions, even though they may violate, if the person comes to the conclusion that it violates the fundamental, mm -hmm. the Charter of Fundamental, fundamental Rights and Freedoms, it can be severed, the act can stand, and these are my reasons. Mm -hmm. So that the public has the benefit of looking at both sides and saying for itself, I agree or disagree that it can stand. Did the public that's, that's the ch challenge I have. In rolling, up, in, the in rolling it, how do did the public have that choice? As a dissenting voice to say, listen, don't roll out because 
the, the public have that descending voice. But that's what the court is there for. So the court and so is the a court bulwark. Have spoke, it's uh, a bulwark mm -hmm. between big state and this. this I agree with you. Citizen. But even though the court is a bulwark between the state and big state and the citizen, where is the voice? Where is the opinion? Del Rose, it's like, it's like somebody coming to convince you of a particular point. Mm -hmm. Yes? Mm -hmm. But not engaging in a discussion of the points that can also erode the foundation of their argument and then seek to address it. And I'm, and I'm, I'm agreeing with you, but then I went back to the initial thing that was done. Mm -hmm. That was not done initially either when this was rolled out. The public... Uh, how Are you much, saying there was no consultation? I don't know if there... Or if no there, enough consultation? There was, in, there was not enough consultation. All right. And so that was my problem, that this thing just came... Last time we hear about it and today roll out. I want to hear from the Court of Appeal or the Privy Council, mm. and I want to hear a dissenting view. I think I want to hear a dissenting and view. And I agree with you. And how a dissenting view views it mm -hmm. so that I can say, hmm, perhaps we could go about it this, this way. way. Yes. How long was it stay in appeal court, though? Well, Chief Just with this new Chief Justice... Mm -hmm. Judgment are going well, to come out within six months. Easy. True, but normally before okay. Chief Justice, it used to come out take years. Years, right? So, but so of course we welcome Chief Justice new styles, style. But um, a, an appeal on a normal basis because he's really um acting out the norm. He's doing very very well. I can tell you, and so an appeal you usually take years. Yes, but listen. With this new chief justice, mm -hmm. you're supposed to give your decision in six months. Right. That's what they're striving for. And he has led by example. Example. So we could get a yes, decision yes. from the Court of Appeal within six months. Uh, That's what I'm saying. Yes. And the government then can say to itself, if 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 the entire if the Court of Appeal comes back and say, I agree with my brother, my brothers and my sister, mm -hmm. then that's not, I don't see why you're going to the Privy Council after that. Perhaps. Depending on how they have reasoned it. Yes. yes. But if it comes back and it says, and there's a dissenting voice. What if it comes back and says, we don't agree with our brothers and sisters? <laughs> or what if it comes back and says, while we agree with our brothers and sisters, these are the points we, we, this is where we differ. Mm -hmm. What if it comes back and says that? I, I, I think we, I think the public should. I think it's too important now for an issue. For us not to do it because this thing has been in the in the works for forty years, you know. Oh yes. And that national identification registration act, you know, mm -hmm. is many years it has been in the making, and so for it to come to this point and dies, I don't think is enough. Is it naked politics dressed up in the form of a right? Hey, on, there there's some like a term. <laughs> Well, as we wind up, folks, let us <laughs> let me say th um, <laughs> let me give mm -hmm. some recognition to some of the persons who've joined us on Facebook Live. Mm -hmm. Kimon, mm -hmm. um, Karine, or Karine, I see you, recognizing you, Leighton, my esteemed professor, Leighton Jackson. Um, I see you as well, um, Rock Allen. Okay, Rock Allen, seeing you there as well. Dayon Willis, pleasant good afternoon, Miss Green. Okay, so you see Dayon Willis, I am not going to bad mind Miss Green. I call Miss Green did bad mind me. It is wonderful to have you address my co-host. Hi, Dayon, how are you doing? Yes. Um, Janiel, esteemed counsel, seeing you as well. Hi, counsel. Claudine, all the way from... Claudine, which state are you again? Remind us. Um, the next time you join us, remind us, Claudine. Let me wave at you. Um, you know if you wave. Yes, man. <laughs> Kenyatta. Um, Cornwall. See you there as well. Ex-police officer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Courtney. Barrett. Barrett, seeing you as well. Wave at you as well. Uh, and I could go on, you know. Dwayne. Yes, well, Dwayne, for my lawyer. You. I see you, Dwayne. Thank you yeah, for that. Why I just teach Maybe you about the way. Stacey, I know I see the thing there, man, so I just press it. <laughs> you know, like a little child who just touched something to see what Hi, Carl Carlene Marie Brown. Good afternoon. Sweet sister. All right. Frederick, see you as well. Hold on, hold on. Go back a little bit. You know who is Frederick? 
Pois é, Woman of God, good evening you to you is, all. That is Pastor Frederick Thomas from Florida. Ah, Pastor, thank you for joining Pastor us. Bishop Thomas. And we want to thank you for the prayers of blessings. Thank that you very much, Bishop Thomas. For this program. Nice and see you soon. Continue praying for us, Pastor. Yes. Paulette, seeing you as well. No, well, I'm looking at Tristan Brown Russell. Russell. Pleasant afternoon to you, my sister. We well, see. When she said this, so she said the angel, and and the and honest, angel. I'm not the angel, my sister. I'm I'm not so famous. Oh, Sophie Clark in Canada. Okay, I'm in. Okay, Sophie, thank you for enlightening yeah, us as to where you are. Yeah, Dan from New York, New York. Big up my New York friends and my New Jersey friends. Um, <laughs> thank you all for joining and for the persons on our WhatsApp. Uh, Walker T and MT Landscaping Services, Vivine, and I'm Jody Ann from St. Mary with her friend Princess, and Kemoy from Sun Hill St. Thomas Carlo from uh, Bar Claris, and of course we have Janet from St. Mary. What Bar Claris mean? No, up in the hills, man. No, what say. it mean? I'm sure Bar Claris? Yes. You know, you know, you know, I'm, I'm going to Google it one day. Right. I'm um, Kem Kemoy. Uh, from Sunny Hills in Thomas. Did they say what they think? Did, no. Did anybody there say no. what they think, whether we should appeal or not? No. But yes, folks, I had invited you all to tell us whether or not you think it should be appealed, you know, but all right, you can drop us a line at another time. Go ahead. Carla from, um, uh, from oh, no, Bal Clarice and Janet from St. Mary City, Denise from Cornwall Barracks, and Kevoy Chambers from Sunny Hills St. Thomas, and um, everyone else. Pleasant afternoon and thanks very much for tuning in. For all the listeners, because I hear that we're only going overseas, and, and trust me, from St. Thomas, Portland, St. Mary, St. Anne, Maple, and Clarendon, Savlamar, Savlamar and all, Westmoreland, mm -hmm. and all those places, you know, Maple, and everybody, I just really want to tell you thanks for tuning in and being a part of In the North the Law. Mr. Chambers, I want to big up again MT Landscaping Services in honor of Mr. Calvin M. De Souza. Mm -hmm. And I really and truly feel good to know that he has made a um, he has made a vow and he has um, also kept Stop up to his it. word. Yes. And so he has made it possible for two children. In addition to that, Mr. Chambers, MT Landscaping Services actually went and print some t-shirts for me with DG Angel. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's the sweetest thing I've ever gotten. You know, this is, since he's doing the shirt, you know, we should take in the north of the road and do a tour of Portland and St. Thomas. You know, so we will do. We, to, we, yes, we'll, we need to talk to... Um, ah, good evening, Mr. Chambers. So sad it just died. <laughs> so sad what? It just died. <laughs> <laughs> Why Bonnie. do you think, you think we should appeal it? Bonnie from Portmorant. You can't appeal so I died. Bonnie said died. <laughs> so it's not like it's in a coma. <laughs> but um, I like a terminology that body. But you see, in this case, Bonnie, the dead might just be risen. Because needs is here. You're not, you're not going anywhere. Trust me, they're going to re regroup and come again. Um, but Bonnie said he, he, it's a pity that it has just died. So thank you again, Mr. Chambers. And when, we, when will we be back here on Wednesday? And what will we be speaking about? The great paternity. We never, we remember, so we just had a conversation, we never did the act, you know? Oh, yes, yes. Oh, you, you get old, man. Yes, yes, yes. What a pity. <laughs> <laughs> So thank you very much. We're actually out of time, and we want to say thanks to everyone that is tuning in. Let me say quickly now to my um, kind sponsors, Native Audio Stage and Lighting, Brahams, Texaco, Task Property Appraisals Company Limited, bringing quality service to you. And, um, of course, our contributors, Toya Nail Shop Number 6, Rosemary Plaza, Morant Bay, St. Thomas. And you can call Toya at 876-426-5066. Big up, my friend, and... Um, somebody that support, Mr. Errol Barnes from Baltimore, USA, always supporting this program. Of course, MT Landscaping Services um, at Francis Lewis Boulevard, Queens, New York at 347-840-4623. Say it from your castle, big up yourself. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, he doesn't like this part of the program, but he can't stop me, okay? Mr. Nicholas Chambers is indeed an attorney at law and operates from legal chambers offices at 1 Arbor Street, shop number five that's upstairs digital and if you want a good nice charming 
um, a patient lawyer, very reasonable, you can get him at 876 392 Actually, what I watch him in a, beside, I give me the, the bad eye. May I watch him, you know? I Who is on the camera? I'm wondering if it's the legal, what exactly, you, you know? Because, you know, the charming, and, okay. <laughs> but uh, when people are in trouble, they want somebody they can talk to. You understand? Mm -hmm. So you can call Mr. Chambers at 876-392-5112. This has been your program in the know of the law. I have been your host, Sergeant Delrose Green, along with my very charming co-host, uh, the